In verse 25 it says, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. If we claim to live in the spirit of God, which means we are spiritual and not carnal. That's what he's saying. If we say we are spiritual and not carnal, then let us walk in the spirit of God. Let us be led by the spirit of God. So the heart of the matter, again, is who is leading you? Who is leading you? Are you being led by the spirit of God? Or are you being led by the flesh? Is Christ living in you? Or is it the old sin loving nature? That old man of sin that is still living in you? Can the Holy Spirit dwell in you? That is the issue. That's the heart that we are trying, that's the heart of the matter we're trying to discuss. Who is living in you? Who is in charge of your life? Don't be like the professors who says that God is in charge of my life and yet they live as though they are in charge of their lives. God cannot even tell them to do anything. They won't listen. If Christ lives in you, you'll be able to walk the new way. With ease. Without struggling. Otherwise, what you will do is you'll be struggling, trying to to live, trying to, 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 to do the law. And each time you'll be frustrated because you will discover that it's difficult. You cannot live that way on your own. You need life of God in you to live it. Do you understand that? You need to have Christ in you to live it. Otherwise, we will end up every day confessing the same thing. Every day the same thing. But when we submit to the, to the, to the, to the Lord Jesus Christ, and allow him to do all that he needs to do, then we will we'll live with ease. I think it's Matthew, is it Matthew chapter 11, 28 to 30? It says, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It says, learn of me, for I am humble and meek and lowly. It says, take on you my burden. My burden is what? Is light and what? Easy. Whatever it is that the Lord is asking you to do. He is the one doing it in you. To be easy. But when you want to do it on your own, you'll be struggling. You'll be struggling. Say, I can't. It's too difficult. Yes, because you want to do it on your own. That means you want to live the old way. Meanwhile, what you need to do is to live as God wants you to live. Not the way you want to live. You need to submit to the Holy Spirit. You need to submit. And allow him sanctify you. Bible speaks of sanctification unto obedience. In 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 2. Through sanctification we are able to obey. Without sanctification we cannot obey. The nature of man. Like I said earlier. Is to rebel against God. He cannot obey. But through sanctification. Which is the work of the Holy Spirit on us. In our lives, on the inner man, it brings us to the place where, where we are able to obey. Once we are able to obey, he will be able to dwell in us. He can now reside in us. We become the temple of the living God. Remember when we began with Acts chapter 3, verse 1, that Peter and John were going to a temple when they were indeed the temple. Do you understand? The way you are going to be the temple of God is when the Spirit of God is living in you. And the Spirit of God will live in you as long as you are obedient to God. Obedient to his, plod, to his prodding. Obedient to his leading. And then, he will be able to lead us. And he will lead us in the new way. Let me just close with Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. Thus says the Lord, stand in the ways and see and ask for the old paths where the good way is and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. The Lord was telling them, walk in this way. They said, we will not. Like God is telling us today, walk in the way, the pathway of the spirit. Walk as the spirit of God is giving you life. The question really is, will you yield? 
Or will you be like the people of Israel who said we will not walk in that way? You don't even have to voice it. You just have to leave it. It will be seen. There are many people that God has brought to him, to himself. And he has said to them, walk in this way. They said we will not. Go and preach the gospel. They said, no, I want to do business. He would say to them, go and leave his own place. I can't live there. It's too filthy. It's too dirty. There are too many sinners there. That man is saying to God, we will not walk that way. Do you understand what we're saying now? So the issue that you have to answer for yourself now. Can you be treated as a new wine skin? Or the old wine skin? Do you still find security in the old ways of living? Where you can, you know, have a front as if you are righteous, as if you are pious. And yet there is iniquity in you. Unconfessed sin. And you can go to church. There are people like that. You will be shocked. They can preach the best sermon ever. After rising from the bed of fornication. They will sing and you will think, oh, heaven has fallen down. It's a lie. Is Satan using that fellow to give the imagery of heaven on earth? And people get confused when they now hear that that person was living a life of sin all that while. They say, so what was happening in church? Even you did not open your heart to God. God would have told you, that fellow is living in sin. Many of us like to be deceived. And that's why when the Spirit of God is speaking to us, we never heed him because we heed the deception. I want us to go home today and talk to God. This one is not to pray in the church. Go home and talk to God. Say to him, Father, I want to possess Christ and I want Christ to possess me. It's a prayer that you pray when you are ready to lose everything to gain Christ. As long as there is something that you want to gain apart from Christ, that prayer, you will not be able to pray it. But if you've made up your mind that I'm ready to lose everything that I might win Christ, then that's a prayer to pray. Say, Lord, I not only want to possess Christ, I want him to possess me. I want him to have me and to do with me as he pleases. My prayer is that as we pray that prayer, we will hear God speaking to us, giving us clear directions. That's when you will hear God, you will see God pointing some areas of I say, this thing you are doing, you must stop it. This way you talk, you must cease. This manner of behavior is not the way. And I pray that at the end of it all, you will be able, you will know that indeed, you are on the right path to eternity. That you are on that narrow gate, that narrow way. You are, looking for, you are going through that narrow gate where the road is narrow. Where the road is not, is not easy to take. But because Christ is with you, it will be easy. God bless you.